Hello everybody, I'm so excited to share the voice of knowledge with you. This is going to be chapter 6, Inner Peace, Taming the Voice with Two Rules. More and more I kept exploring the whole dynamic of the story that humans create. What I discovered is that the story has a voice, a voice so loud, yet only we can hear it. As I said before, you can call it thinking if you want, I call it the voice of knowledge. That voice is always there, it never stops, it's not even real but we hear it. Of course, you can say, well, it's me. I'm the one who's talking. But if you are the voice that's talking, then who's listening? The voice of knowledge can also be called the liar who lives in your head. A beautiful tree of knowledge lives in your head, and it's the home for guess who? The prince of lies. And this is the problem because the voice of the liar speaks in your language, but your integrity, your spirit, the truth, has no language. You just know truth. You feel it. The voice of your spirit tries to come out. But the voice of the liar is stronger and louder and it hooks your attention almost all of the time. You hear the voice, and not just one voice, but an entire mitote, which is like a thousand voices talking all at once. And what are these voices telling you? Look at you. Who do you think you are? You'll never make it. You aren't smart enough. Why should I try? Nobody understands me. What is he doing? What is she doing? If he doesn't love, what if he doesn't love me? I'm so lonely, nobody wants to be with me, nobody really likes me, I wonder if those people are talking about me. What will they think about me? Look at all the injustice in the world. How can I be happy when millions of people are dying of starvation? The voice of knowledge is telling you what you are and what you are not. It's always trying to make sense out of everything. I call it the voice of knowledge because it's telling you everything you know. It's telling you your point of view in a conversation that never ends. For many people, it's even worse because the voice is not just talking nonsense. The voice is judging and criticizing. It's constantly gossiping in your head about you and the people around you. That voice is usually lying because it's the voice of what you have learned. And you have learned so many lies, mainly about yourself. You cannot see the liar, but you can hear the voice. The voice of knowledge can come from your own head, or it can come from people around you. It can be your own opinion, or it can be the opinion of someone else. But your emotional reaction to that voice is telling you, I'm being abused. Every time we judge ourselves, find ourselves guilty, and punish ourselves, it's because the voice in our head is telling us lies. Every time we have a conflict with our father, our mother, our children, or our beloved, it's because we believe in these lies, and they believe in them too. It's not just that. When we believe in lies, we cannot see the truth, so we make thousands of assumptions and we take them as truth. One of the biggest assumptions we make is that the lies we believe are truth. For example, we believe that we know what we are. When we get angry, we say, oh, that's just the way I am. When we get jealous, oh, that's the way I am. When we hate, that's the way I am. But is this true? I'm not sure about that. I used to make the assumption that I was the one who was talking and that I was the one who said all of those things that I didn't want to say. It was a big surprise when I discovered that it was not me. It was the way I learned to be. And I practiced and practiced until I mastered that performance. The voice that says that's the way I am is the voice of knowledge. It's the voice of the liar in the tree, living in the tree of knowledge in your head. The Toltec considered It's a mental disease that is highly contagious because it's transmitted from human to human through knowledge. The symptoms of the disease are fear, anger, hatred, sadness, jealousy, conflict, and separation between humans. Again, these lies are controlling the dream of our life. I think this is obvious. My grandfather told me in the simplest way, Miguel, the conflict is between the truth and what is not the truth. And this was nothing new. 2,000 years ago, One of the greatest masters, at least in my own story, said, And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? All those lies, especially from the liar who lives in your head and talks to you all the time. We call it thinking. I used to tell my apprentices, just because you hear a voice in your head, it doesn't mean that it's speaking the truth. Well, I don't believe that voice and that voice won't have any power over you. There is a movie that illustrates my point beautifully. It's called A Beautiful Mind. At first I thought, oh, another spy movie. But I became more interested when I realized that the main character is schizophrenic. He is a brilliant man, a genius, but he sees people who don't exist. 
These people are controlling his life because he listens to their opinions and follows whatever they tell him to do. They are lying to him and by listening to what they tell him, he's ruining his life. He has no idea that these people are hallucinations until his wife puts him in a mental hospital where he's diagnosed as schizophrenic and given medication. The visions disappear, but the drug has secondary effects. He decides to stop taking it. Without the drug, the visions come back. And he finds out that it's true that nobody else can see the people he sees. Now he has to make a choice. Go back to the hospital, lose his wife, and accept that he's mentally ill, or face the visions and overcome them. He, When he finally has the awareness that the people he sees are not real, he makes a very smart decision. He says, I will not pay attention to them. I will not believe what they tell me. The power the visions have over him is lost when he no longer believes in them. With this awareness, he finds peace. And after many years of not putting his attention on them, the visions hardly talk to him anymore. Even though he still sees them, they don't waste their time because he doesn't listen anyway. This movie is wonderful because it shows if you don't believe in the voice in your head, it loses the power and you become authentic again. The voice in your head isn't even real, but it's ruling your life. Once that voice hooks your attention, it makes you do whatever you want to do. How many times has the voice made you say yes when you really wanted to say no? Or the opposite, the voice made you say no when you wanted to say yes. How many times has the voice made you doubt what you feel in your heart? How many times have you missed opportunities to do what you really want to do with your life because of fear? Fear that was a reaction to believing the voice in your head. How many times have you broken up with someone you really love just because the voice of knowledge told you to? How many times have you tried to control the people you love because you follow that voice? How many times have you gotten angry or jealous or lost control and hurt the people you really love just because of the voice? You can see what you have done by following instructions from the voice of knowledge. By following the lies, that voice tells you to do so many things to do that go against yourself, just like the visions of the character in your movie. The only difference between you and that man is maybe you don't see the visions, but you hear the voice. It's overwhelming and never stops, and we pretend that we are mentally sane. It is obvious that the voice of knowledge is the story talking by itself. As soon as an idea hooks your attention, your story goes into that direction. Then it takes you anywhere and everywhere without direction. Every idea is repeating itself, and there are so many ideas in your head competing for your attention. That is the voice changing from one moment to the next moment. I compare the voice of knowledge to a wild horse that is taking you wherever it wants to go. You have no control over that vo that horse. But if you cannot stop the horse, at least you can try to tame the horse. I tell my apprentices, once you learn to tame the horse, you will ride the horse and thinking becomes a tool that takes you where you want to go. If you don't believe that voice, it becomes quieter and quieter and speaks to you less and less until it stops talking to you. If you have to talk to yourself, then why not be friendly? Why not tell yourself how beautiful and wonderful you are? Then at least you have someone to talk to when you're alone. But if the voice, of, if the voice in your head is nasty and abusive, it's not fun at all. If that voice is telling you lies, if it's letting you know why you should be ashamed of yourself or why your beloved doesn't talk to you, then it's better to be quiet. If you don't like a person, you can walk away from that person. If you don't like yourself, you cannot escape yourself. You are with yourself wherever you go. This is why some people try to numb themselves with alcohol or drugs. Or maybe they overeat or gamble to make themselves forget who they are. Of course, this doesn't work because the storyteller judges everything we do. And this leads to more shame and self-rejection. Long ago, I stopped listening to the voice of knowledge. I remember that I used to go outside and tell myself, Oh, look at the beautiful clouds, the flowers. Mm, they smell so good. As if I didn't know that. I no longer make up stories for myself. I know what I know. Why tell myself what I already know? Does that make sense? It's just a habit. I don't waste my time and energy by talking to myself. I no longer have that ongoing voice in my head. And I can assure you, it's wonderful. You don't need internal dialogue. You can know without thinking. The value of cultivating a silent mind has been known for thousands of years. In India, people use meditation 
and the chanting of mantras to stop the interdialogue. To have peace in your head is incredible. Imagine being in an, in an environment where there is a constant sound. Bzz, bzz, bzz. The moment comes when you don't even notice the noise. You know something is bothering you, but you no longer notice what it is. The moment the noise stops, you notice the silence and feel the relief. When the voice in your head finally stops talking, it feels something like that. We call it inner peace. When I shared this with my apprentices, they understood what I was telling them. They said, we know the voice of knowledge lives in our head, and we know that it's a liar. But how do we stop it from talking to us? By that time, I had already won over the voice, and I was completely at peace. I said, okay, I will give you two simple rules. If you follow these rules, there is a chance that you will tame the voice or even win the challenge against the liar. The solution for taming the liar is to stop believing what it tells you. What happens when someone tells you a lie and you know it's a lie? It doesn't affect you because you don't believe the lie. If you don't believe it, the lie cannot survive the test of your skepticism. The lie disappears. But in that simplicity, there is also a big challenge. Why? Because believing in your own lies makes you feel safe. And believing the lies of other people is tempting. When you are ready for the challenge, the following two roles will accelerate the process of purifying your belief system, which is everything in your personal tree of knowledge. Rule number one, don't believe yourself, but keep your mind open. Keep your heart open. Listen to yourself, listen to your story, but don't believe it. Now you know that the story you are writing is fiction. It's not even real. When you hear the voice in your head, do not take it personally. You know that knowledge is usually lying, usually lying to you. Listen and ask if it's speaking the truth or not. If you don't believe the lies, believe your own lies, your lies will not survive. And you can make better choices based on the truth. Don't believe yourself, but learn to listen. Because sometimes the voice of knowledge can have a brilliant idea. And if you agree with the idea, then take it. It could be a moment of inspiration that leads to a great opportunity in life. Respect your story and learn to really listen. When you listen to your story, the communication with yourself will improve. You will see your story with clarity. And if you don't like the story, change it. Don't believe yourself mainly when you are using the voice against yourself. The voice can make you be afraid to be alive, to express who you really are. It can stop you from doing what you really want to do with your life. That voice has been in control of your head for so many years. And no, that voice will not give up just because you want it to leave you alone. But at least you can challenge that voice by not believing it. That's why I say, don't believe yourself. Rule number two, don't believe anybody else. And that includes me for the same reason. You know that if you lie to yourself, surely other people lie to themselves. And if they lie to themselves, they will lie to you. When people talk to you, who is speaking through them? Who is dictating what they say? You have no idea if what they said is coming from their hearts or the prince of lies who lives in their head. You don't know, so don't believe them. But learn to listen without judging. You don't need to judge other people because they lie. How many times have you heard someone say, oh, he's a pathological liar, when in reality, everyone is possessed by this prince of lies. There are lies everywhere. People are always lying. And when they don't have awareness, they don't even know it. Sometimes they really believe that what they are saying is true. And they can really believe it, but it doesn't mean that it's true. Don't believe anybody, but this doesn't mean closing your mind or heart. Listen to other people tell their story. You know that it's just a story and that it's only true for them. When you listen, you can understand their story. You can see where people are coming from and the communication can be wonderful. Other people need to express their story to project what they believe. But you don't have to agree with it. Don't believe, but listen. Even if it's just a story, sometimes the words that come from other storytellers can come from their integrity. When this happens, your own integrity recognizes it right away and you agree with what they are saying. Their voice goes directly to your spirit, and you feel you already know what they are telling you is the truth. Don't believe anybody else, but listen because sometimes a moment of inspiration or opportunity can come to the voice of someone else. 
The way other people create their story might reflect the way you create your story. And when they are exposed, you can see how they invest their faith in lies. You might see the lies right away when you couldn't see them in yourself. By listening to their story, you might recognize the truth about something you do all the time. And that truth can change your own story. Listen to their story, but don't believe it. That's the key. If other people tell you, look at the way you are dressed, that remark doesn't ruin your day. You listen to their story, but you don't believe it. You can decide if it's true or not according to your story. But you don't have to be you don't have to have an emotional reaction anymore. If you decide that it's true, you can change what you are wearing and there is no problem. This is something simple that is happening all the time. People constantly express their point of view and we may even ask them for their point of view, but don't believe it. When people talk about you, now you know they are talking about a secondary character in their, in their story who represents you. They're talking about an image they create for you. You know that it has nothing to do with you. But if you agree, if you believe what they say, then their story becomes a part of your story. If you take it personally, it modifies your story. If you don't take it personally, the opinions of others do not affect you the way they used to. And you have more patience with people. This helps you to avoid a great deal of conflict. If you follow these two rules, don't believe yourself and don't believe anybody else, all of the lies that come from the voice of knowledge will not survive your skepticism. Being skeptical is not about being judgmental. It's about not taking the position that you are more intelligent than others. You just don't believe and what is true will become obvious. This is very interesting because the truth survives your skepticism even if you don't believe it. That is the beauty of truth. The truth doesn't need anybody. The truth is still the truth whether or not you believe it. Can we say the same about lies? No. Lies only exist because we believe them. If we don't believe in lies, they simply disappear. Every day the sun is in the sky, whether we believe it or not. The earth is round, even if the entire world believes it's flat. Hundreds of years ago, everyone believed this lie. They would swear that the earth was flat, and they were only they were certain that the earth was the center of the universe with the sun revolving around it. People really believed this, they had no doubt about it, but just because they believed it, did that make it true? No. But believing those lies made them feel safe. Humans believe so many lies, some of these lies are so subtle and convincing that we base our entire virtual reality on them without even noticing that they are lies. The lies we believe about ourselves can be difficult to see because we are so used to them that they seem normal. For example, if you believe the common lie, I'm not worth it. That lie lives in your mind because you believe it. You don't believe people who tell you how great you are. And you don't believe them because you believe the opposite. Your faith is already invested in a belief that is not the truth. But your faith guides your actions. By not feeling worthy, how do you express yourself to other people? You're shy. How can you ask for something when you don't believe you are worth it? What do you believe about yourself is what you project to other people. And that is what others believe about you. Of course, that is how they treat you, which, is, which only reinforces the belief that you aren't worth it. The truth is that you are worth it. Everybody is worth it. If you believe the lie that you cannot speak in public, then that will be done. When you try to speak in public, you're afraid. The only way to break your faith in this agreement is by taking the action and doing it. Then you prove that it's a lie and you are no longer afraid. If you believe that you cannot have a loving relationship, that will be done. If you feel that you don't deserve love, even if love is right in front of you, you just don't take it because you're blind to it. You only see what you want to see and you only hear what you want to hear. Everything you perceive is just more support for your lies. If you understand these examples, you can just imagine how many lies you believe about yourself and how many lies you believe about your parents, your children, your siblings, or your partner. Every time you judge them, you give voice to the false beliefs in your own tree of knowledge. You give your power to these lies. And what is the result? Anger, jealousy, or even hate. Then you accumulate all of that emotional poison and the moment comes to you when you lose control and say something that you don't want to say. Can you see the power of what I'm sharing with you? You can change your life by refusing to believe your own lies. 
you can start with the main lies that limit the expression of your happiness and your love. If you take your faith away from these lies, they lose your power over you, then you can recover your faith and invest in it in different beliefs. If you stop believing in these lies, everything in your life changes like magic. There is a part of the Iliad by Homer that I really love. We, the gods, will live as long as the humans believe in us. The day the humans no longer believe in us, all the gods will disappear. This is beautiful. Centuries ago, the Greek gods were worshipped by hundreds of thousands of people. Today, they're just legends. When we don't believe in lies, the lies disappear, and the truth becomes obvious. Many lies enslave us, but only one thing can free us, and it's the truth. Only the truth can set us free from fear, the drama, and the conflict in our lives. This is the absolute truth. I cannot put it any more simply than that. Points to ponder. What you call thinking is the voice of knowledge, making up stories, telling you what you know, and trying to make sense out of everything you don't know. The problem is that the voice makes you do so many things that makes you go against yourself. The voice in your head is like a wild horse taking you wherever it wants to go. Once you tame the horse, you can ride the horse, and the knowledge becomes a tool for communication. Then, that takes you where you want to go. You don't need internal dialogue. You can know without thinking. You can perceive with your feelings. Why waste energy telling yourself what you already know or worrying about what you don't know? When the voice in your head finally stops talking, you experience inner peace. The solution for taming the liar in your head is to stop believing what it tells you. If you follow the two rules, don't believe yourself and don't believe anybody else. All of the lies you believe won't survive your skepticism and will simply disappear. The truth survives on our skepticism, but we cannot say the same about lies. Lies can only survive if we believe them. The truth is still the truth, whether or not we believe it. That is the beauty of truth. The voice of knowledge rules your life, and it's a tyrant. If you refuse to obey that voice, it becomes quieter and quieter, and speaks to you less and less, until it no longer controls you. When the voice loses its power over you, lies no longer rule your life, and you become authentic again. Thank you guys for reading this with me. I would appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe the video and I will be reading chapter 7 next. Thank you for listening.